lot more. Oh, Josh, you've been in every tavern in New Orleans. Yeah, everyone except this one, and this one is a lively place, Daniel. All right. Yeah, real lively, huh? <laughs> This, this is your, your round, Sonny. My round? That's, that's what I said. What did I say? Well, I just got here. Well, maybe, maybe you just got, got here, but you, you've been drinking my whiskey. All right. What'll it be? M mold wine. M make it three. Well, what are you going to have? Tabernacle? Could you spare a penny for the tabernacle, please? Could you spare... Oh, I was just... I was clumsy. You cheated. I saw you. You had three kings, I had a full house. I saw her hand you a card when she passed you the cup. You accused Creole Jim of being in league with a Bible thumper. You sure of that, Jen? I saw what I saw. I shall demand satisfaction. My seconds will call on you at dawn. Do you mind if I see you home? Oh, I'll be fine. This is a rough section, and I'd feel a whole lot better if you'd let me see you home. Uh, ma'am, I'm Josh. Josh Clements. This is my friend, Daniel Boone. Pleased to meet you, ma'am. My name's Mary Pickett. I wish you'd let me teach that fancy gambler a lesson he needed a tannin. After what he done to you. I had no like coming in like I did. Begging like that. You're in some kind of trouble, ain't you? I was begging. But not for no church. It was for them. Billy, Rachel. Yours? Look at them. Two ragamuffins toddling after their ma when they ain't fighting street dogs for a scrap of meat left on a bone. You mean you ain't got no man to look after you? He was cut down in the flower of manhood at Bunker Hill. Fighting for glory. I'm sorry, Mr. Clements. Troubling you with my miseries. I feel downright ashamed. Well, you sure ain't got no cause to be. Now, you're a brave woman. Now, you listen to me, Mary Pickett. Yes? First off, we're gonna belly up to that feed trough, and we're gonna work our way through the biggest nose bag of fiddles since, since Moses hit the promised land. Ain't that right, Daniel? Well, Josh, I'm afraid you're gonna have to go to that promised land all by yourself, because I'd better get back to the inn. Nice meeting you, ma'am. Uh, Daniel. Uh... Daniel, uh, I'm afraid that I'm gonna need a little put. I'm a little bit short. Well, Josh, just uh, remember that this is the bottom of your barrel. Oh, Daniel, she's a poor widow lady with two hungry young'uns. Who just happened to meet a rich trapper from Kentucky. Remember, we move out at sunup. I don't think your friend took to me. Well, uh, he, he just ain't used to city ways like I am. Come on. Daniel Boone was a man. Yes, 
a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Gentle Boo was a man, yes, a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty oak tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his raw high shoe. The rippin'est, roarin'est, fightin'est man the frontier ever knew. Gumbo, yams, cornbread, grit. You better save some room for dessert. Please, mister, do I have to? You have to what? Eat all this. Well, that's just your third plate. Fifth. I'm gonna bust. <laughs> what about you, Billy? Ed, you haven't even touched your plate. I suppose when your heart's just brimming with gladness, it's hard to... None of that. Now, well, you got a lot of things to talk over, you and me. Can it wait till I get back? Well, it's something I ain't had too much practice saying, and um, I want to make sure to have time for it to come out just right. Eat your gumbo. Yeah, that was nice. Except for Ben, Billy, and Rachel's mama, everything I told you is a lie. I leave you my two babies, knowing they will have a better life with you than they ever had with me. Don't try to find me. I'm already lost. God bless you. Mary Pickett. We'll find her. We always find her. Come on, Billy. Uh, uh, hold on. Just hold on just a minute. You think maybe you could uh, wait until morning before you start to go out and look? Got a couple of comfortable beds over there. Guess there's no harm in that. Josh. Do you think you're going to be able to find their mall that fast? No. Well, do you want to tell me what you're aiming to do? 
I'm going to take them back to Boonesboro. Well, what do you think they are? A couple of cute raccoons you're going to keep as pets? Well, it's better than winding up in some workhouse. Daniel, they sell kids down here. They do. All right, let me get right down to it. Oh, no, uh, I reckon Becky will be pleased. Becky ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm going to keep them. Well, Josh, it's more than just tousling their hair and and feeding them. You gotta you gotta care for them and you gotta uh, love them and you gotta wonder what they're thinking about in their little heads. Well, I sure give them more than they can get in some orphanage. I want them to have a paw, Daniel. Like you never had, Josh. I figure if a kid never had one, he might be ready. Clements. Well, thank you very much, Miss Chase. Top of the morning to you, Miss Boone. Never knew he was gone so long. Cincinnatus, I'm going to need a whole wagon load of supplies. Now, I can start off with a barrel of flour. Uh, now, just a minute. Is this going to be uh, cash or credit? You trying to tell me something? Maybe. You're going to take out them chicken scratchings and tote them up, ain't you? Mm -hmm. These chicken scratchings you refer to happen to come to a mighty 23 pounds, 8 shillings, thruppence. <clears throat> Isn't that a nice, warm welcome for me after me being gone all winter? Well, now, Josh, it ain't that we ain't glad to have you back, but a uh, man with an appetite like yours, I just can't afford a steak. Howsomever, I, um, uh, I can't deny, uh, a tankard of my best blue thunder. And it will be on me. I will pay for my own. Hey, I'll take one of them, too, here. Me, he said, I sure wish I'd have known that, Reverend. I could have saved my ma and pa. <laughs> No, no, no. I gotta be going. You could have told me earlier Josh brought back two children. He brought back a water moccasin once Paul never told you about. There's a difference between a critter and two babies. Well, they're not exactly babies, Becky. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Hi, Becky, Dan. Sure you're not forgetting something? Forgetting something. Oh, the young'uns. What do you think of? Right now, it's what I think of you that counts, Mr. Clements. All right, Israel, wake him up. We're going to take him home with us. Now, wait a minute. They're mine. Yours? And what's your claim to them? Fatherhood? Not exactly, but I found them, and I'm going to keep them. Oh, I, I know, Becky, you don't look too good, but I really want to be their pa. Josh Clements, confirmed bachelor? Well, now, Becky, if... Uh... Josh was all fired set on living sinful. He wouldn't have brought him along now, would he? Come on, Rachel. Come on, hon. right there and never lock a door. It don't matter if somebody won't steal something. Hmm. Don't look like no castle to me, mister. Well, <laughs> maybe you just ain't looking too sharp. You don't see nobody 
dipping candles and boiling soap and grinding corn, do you? But that's woman's work. Right you are, Rach. And this is Clement's castle right here. Here, I'm the king. You don't see no woman sitting over there in a rocking chair getting ready to moan and groan about something. No fancy tablecloths, shiny pewter, no curtains up at the window. No, sir. Ha, <laughs> ha! Old Josh Clements is a free man, and that's the way it's going to stay. You afraid of women, mister? Uh, no. Had kind of a close scrape with a widow spoon one time. I still got a little of tremblies for that. Well, well women are all right. Uh, they're good for feathering a nest, but, uh, I mean, this ain't no tree, you know. No, sir, this, this is a man's castle. And, Billy, I want to tell you, one of these days, it's going to be all yours. It's dirty. It smells funny, too. Well, th that's a smell of Kentucky. Take a whiff of this air. Smell that. I don't smell nothing. It, it don't smell. You don't smell nothing? Well, wait a minute. Now listen. There must be at least, at least 10 different smells in that air. Pine needles, corner boiling. That engines call that succotash. Uh, old mama bear cuffing her cubs. That snow on the mountain. Sap welling up in them maple trees. Becky Boone churning butter. There's a lot of information in smells. And besides, it's just downright pleasant. Mister, you're crazy. That don't mean we're staying, neither. You mean even after you know that your mama told me to take care of you? You don't believe me, do you? I don't believe grown-ups. Me too. <laughs> you know, I guess I can't blame you for that, seeing as how I am over 10 years old. The truth of the matter is, uh, I'm kind of a lonesome critter up here. Nobody but the Indians and a few bears and some more no-account grown-ups to jaw at. And you want us around for jawing? That's it. Plain and simple. We gotta have a meeting. <laughs> Oh, I, I didn't figure it was going to come cheap. All right, how much? A penny a day apiece. That's for John. All the vittles we can eat, that's to keep up our strength. We need our strength. You two drive a pretty hard bargain, you know. That ain't all, mister. How foolish of me to think that it would be. All right, what else? We want to see a real honest to engine, engine rain dance. Honest engine. You got me up again the wall now. That engine rain dance, now that ain't easy to fix, you know. Tarnation, we'll do it. This is a real Austin Ninja reindeer. Well, you don't think I'd run in a fake on you, do you? Sure don't look like rain. Well, I mean, that takes a whole lot of stomping. You don't get rain with just a little bit. You've got to do a lot of shaking. Uh, excuse me, just a minute. I promised them rain. Now, are you going to deliver or ain't you? You picked a heck of a day for it. Well, it so happens that this is the day that they wanted to get wet. Maybe you're doing the wrong stomp. You don't tell me how to stomp, and I don't tell you how to be a papa. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey,
while you're cutting. What you thinking about? Woodland. Ain't you gonna take us into the woods? Sure. But I gotta tell you a few things before we go. First thing you gotta know about woodsmanship, stay close to your leader. Who's that? Me, of course. Do I get to be leader once? Sure. As soon as you get to know as much as I do. When'll that be? You bring home your first bear. I suppose you, uh, really got yourself a bear. Paul's the one who actually shot him. But I'm the one who found him, told Paul where to point his musket. Gosh. The other thing you gotta know is keep your eyes open. Whenever you don't understand anything, just ask me. What, Sky? Sky? Do you know or don't you? Sky's just Sky. Tain't neither. Sky's where God lives and watches over things like birds and trees and orphans. And if you want to pray sometimes, he's up there listening. Thanks, Rachel. Listen, if you want to lead this expedition, just go right ahead. No. Let's go. Exactly, company. We're neighbors. Can we come in? He ain't home. Oh, well, we came to see you. Sort of make a call. Hi, Billy. I can see your house proud. Just swept up a bit. Men mess things up a lot. So I've noticed. It'd pleasure me to offer you a cup of tea, but... Well, it just so happens I've got the makings right here. you go to bed hungry, do you? I don't see you loaded down with rabbit, mister. Rabbits? Why, I saw a couple of rabbits down there, but this is crony. I didn't have the heart to shoot them. And besides, I got something that's a whole lot better than rabbit. Why, there's berries and nuts and sunflower roots in it. You take a bite out of that and make rabbit taste like bark. You're going to scrub the hide off of him. What in tarnation? We done eight. We had porridge and bacon and cornbread and... Oh, shut up, Billy. All right. Who come by? The boys' room is Mom and Pa. It looks to me like that folks could let you get settled in before they come over bringing yesterday's leftover food. You finish it. You 
look clean enough to me. You've got in mind to mother me, too? Go ahead and say it. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I couldn't bag an elephant if he's standing on my foot. <laughs> you're getting to remind me of more Witherspoon every day. I didn't say a word, mister. Well, you didn't say nothing. But all the while, you're still telling me what a worthless character I am. Better eat your supper before it gets cold. I brought my own supper. Fruits and nuts. It's the kind of stuff that makes men strong. What'd you do for squirrels? Well, rich food like that's not good for your stomach. You ready to go to bed, Billy? Ain't you gonna tell us a story? Mom always did. All right. How would you like to hear about the time I was nearly scalped by the Shawnee? He likes to learn about David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Don't you know your Bible, mister? Sure I do. Uh, David was that little runny feller with a slingshot, wasn't it? Who slew Goliath the Philistine. I was getting to that. Whose height was six cubits in a span. I was going to tell him he was a giant. <laughs> Anyhow, now, these Philistines was about ready to massacre the fort when David was... And David took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag. Now, what difference does it make what kind of bag he put the rocks in? It still was a shepherd's bag. Well, anyhow, David was about ready to bushwhack Goliath. You're supposed to say it came to pass. Now, who's telling this yarn, you or me? You are, Josh. Right, right, Billy. And David put his hand in this shepherd's bag and took out one of them smooth rocks and put it in his slingshot and hit old Goliath with it and down he went, all six cubits of him. <laughs> He's asleep. He always falls asleep when you get to the smoking part. Come on, big man. I'm moving down the floor as soon as you want your bed. No, 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 that's, that's your bed, yours and Billy's. I always bunk outside in here. Thanks for trying anyway, mister. Trying to what? To be our papa. We don't remember having one, so we know how to do without. Well, you ain't gonna. You hear me? You ain't gonna do with that. All right, what else you got? Uh, why don't you have a sit in this rocker over here? Hmm? <laughs> I don't have to sit in that to know it's about ready to fall apart. You wouldn't know a good chair from kindling. Now, hold on just a minute. I didn't say I wasn't interested, did I? Sit down and try it out. Uh -huh. Squeaks a lot. That's your bones, you old skin flint. <laughs> Josh, I will give you 20 shillings for it, sight unseen. <laughs> sight unseen? You're sitting in it. Oh, I mean, you don't have to inspect it for the workmanship. You know the trouble with you? You don't know the history of this chair. What's the history got to do with it? This chair. This chair belonged to General George Washington. General Washington? Hmm. Well, uh, then how come you got your grubby hands on it? It was bequeathed to me. Now, Josh, would you mind telling me how somebody as low down in the social strata as you would be favored in the bequeathing? Well, uh, it's common knowledge that the general has false teeth. Or did you know about that? Of course I knew it. Don't you think a tavern keeper knows what's going on in the world? But, but did you notice that the brace is not under this arm here? Well, what's that got to do with it? 
What's that? That's what they manufactured the General's choppers out of. Josh, that still don't tell me how you come by it. Well, I am the man that introduced the General to John Crockett. John Crockett? Teve's a carver that uh, carved the General's choppers out of that piece. He's a little run of a feller from over Trenton. I suppose he just uh, up and give this rocker to you in, in pure gratitude? No. Uh, Martha did. Martha? Washington? Th this chair could be a big drawing card in your store. Why, you could get six pence just for the privilege of sitting in it. I'll take it. Thirty shillings. Thirty shillings. I I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I will throw in the whole kit and caboodle of them for fifty shillings in trade. I'll do it. But only because you got me in a, in a giveaway mood. All right. the wash. Now I'll take a, a sack of flour and a bolt of blue and a sack of salt and uh, a jug of ale just to ease the pain. <laughs> She's got the pastor with her. Oh, me looking the way I look. Well, if I can tell anything but that strut of her, she's not after your secret for ham, hock, and beans. What other lies do women tell you about me, Dan? Just all the things that make you look bad. Seems she doesn't think a single man is fit to raise two youngins. Does she want to show me in the good book where it says you can't she's raise youngin and let your... pastor on her side. Uh -huh. Oh, I can hear her. I can hear her now. Oh, it's common knowledge what his practices are, Parson. All that foul language and, and drinking and... Daniel, do you really think she can get him away from me? I don't know, but I figure she won't stop trying until she can. If she did, who would they go to? Well, the pastor figures they ought to be made wards of the community. Oh, I can see that. Billy and Rachel being passed around like a couple of fire buckets. I, I know what she wants. She wants to get hitched up with me. That's what she wants. What? You don't look like it's as crazy as I feel like it is. Well, I admit that she's kind of plain spoken in her ways. And, well, she's a decent woman and uh, not too bad to look at. I'm not going to sell myself for a mess of pottage. Pretty nice mess of pottage old Ezra left her with. You asking me to give up my independence? We fought a war for that, Dal. I didn't think we fought it to keep you single. You asking me to give up coming home whenever I want to, tilting a couple of Gabe and Cully? Right now, I can pick up, go to Salem, go to New Orleans whenever I want to without asking anybody. I'm free, Dal, free. Well, I figured you were willing to give some of that up when you brought those two tykes home with you. Or were you? Oh, I'll admit, this time Rachel can tongue lash you, it seems like she's grown sour. But when I look at them, I, I feel like butter on a stack of hoe cakes. You're saying you want to keep them? Well, I'm their pappy, ain't I? Well, that may be, but the widow says that they're missing somebody. I never thought I'd have to get hitched to keep Rachel and Billy. But I guess if that's what it takes, the widow's got me treed. You didn't tell me much about New Orleans, Mr. Clements. Well, uh, in the way I see it, it's a city that's dark with temptation and sin, Mrs. Spoon. You were gone all winter. It must have been a struggle for you, Mr. Clements. I fought it every step of the way. And it made it a whole lot easier knowing uh, <laughs> what I had to come home to. What was it you had to come home to, Mr. Clements? 
Kentucky Spring, Mrs. Spoon. Ah, nothing like it. Oh, is that a fact, Mr. Clements? Creeks gushing, birds singing, buds popping, and you're the loveliest one around, Abigail. <gasps> Are you trying to turn my head, Mr. Clements? I sure am. I ain't more my son to go to meeting Duds to prove it to you. That's what you told me about the bar, too. I killed him first time. Hiya, Josh. Oh, hey, Stuart, yeah. ain't you? Huh? Hi, Josh, what it be? Rum or ale? Uh, I, I got uh, some important things to discuss with the widow. Whatever it is you have to say to me, Mr. Clemens, can wait, I'm sure. No, 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 wait, wait, wait just a minute, Abigail. Seems to me that me and I have more important things to do than sit around at a tavern drinking beer. Don't blame them too much, so Abigail. I have been gone all winter. They were drinking in September. They don't need any excuse for carousing. <clears throat> tavern tramps never do. Are you trying to tell me that you are a reformed man, Mr. Clements? Well, then there's all kinds of reformed, Abigail. Now, I allow is how I take a swallow now and then, but just to keep the news spread around, you understand, and wet my whistle a little bit. When you travel as much as I do, why, well, folks kind of expect you to keep them informed, you know, about what's going on here and there. Uh, for instance, did you know that in New Orleans, the women of high fashion have got skirts so high that they're showing a scandalous amount of their ankles? I am not interested in high fashion, Mr. Clements. I thought you'd be shocked, Abigail. Afternoon, uh, Mrs. Spoon. Uh, Josh, uh, good to see you back here regular again. <laughs> understand the ladies down at the Delta mighty fast. I wouldn't know about that. <laughs> you wouldn't, huh? Have you forgot that I was down there to do some important trading? Oh, you was, huh? You want the usual? A pot of tea. Pot you want that with rum or blue thunder? It seems to me, landlord, that a fella could order a pot of... Will you just simmer down before you get all lollywoggled? I don't know what this has turned into, a Hessian's lady's aid. <clears throat> now, Abigail, it, uh, it ain't no secret the way I feel about you. I, I know, it's... It ain't been quite a year since Cesar was quilled by that porcupine, but... It was a Shawnee arrow poisoning that took him. Yeah, uh-huh. I, I keep forgetting whether he's quilled or an arrow got him, but, but uh, the fact remains that you are still a widow. That I am, Mr. Clements. He was a good man. Huh? Ezra was. And he was a good friend to you, too, Mr. Clements. Oh, indeed he was. I ain't forgot how he loaned me his grinding stone. He was the best chinker in Boone's Bell. Oh, I, I'd go so far as saying all of Kentucky, Abigail. But, Mr. Spoon... Is dead, Mr. Clements? Lord, rest his soul. Boy, well, amen to that, Abigail. But, but it's one thing to bury a man and another uh, to, to keep him afloat with grief. I, I'm not sure I follow your meaning, Mr. Clements. Well, what I'm trying to say is this, Abigail. You're through being a widow. I am. You, you, you're you're going to become a mother. Abigail, you've always been a woman with a powerful lot of love in you. And since Ezra's gone, you've had it all dammed up inside you and no place to go. And I'm gonna undam you. I'm gonna turn loose the beautiful waters of love till Rachel and Billy are just dripping with it. <laughs> it seems like you have changed, Mr. Clemens. You can call me Josh. Josh. It's almost like Ezra never left. And it won't take but a day to move you in. Move me in? To my place. Uh-huh. And it won't take more than a rip and a stitch to fit you, neither. Ezra's clothes are all stashed, neat, and pressed just like it was the day he went. Including his razor strop. Ain't that grand. What day would you like to set for the wedding, Josh? There is 
with your tea. Bring me a mug of rum, Cincinnati. But you just said you wanted to... Never bottle. mind what I said. Get me a mug of rum and hurry. Sure. I ain't gonna do it, Abby. I'd be some kind of a skunk, which I ain't sunk to yet, if I tried to pass myself off as a likely candidate for a replacement for old Ezra Spoon. Here's your rum. Rachel and Billy. Not since this morning. They've done it. They've up and run off. Run off? Well, now, hold on, Josh. Have you got any hard reason for thinking that? Yeah, Rachel. She just never did take to me. Oh, Josh. Now, did you look at the compound? You know how kids well, like to. I, I think he's right. I didn't think much of it when she was asking me, but she kept on wanting to know the quickest way to the high road. Well, what'd you tell her? Through Shawnee country. I didn't think that well, she. Oh, it ain't your fault. It's my fault, Israel. We'll find him. Well, can I go with them all? I know how to talk to him. All right, son. Two hours ahead of start, me join of that winning. It's almost dark. We can't have gone very far. I did hear him say these flower roots were good eating. Come on. 
this time, Rachel. You saying I'm sick? Well, you got yourself a pretty good chill. I ain't never been sick a day in my life. Now, you tell me where... You look funny in that. (laughs) Ezreal said you done real good in the woods. Do you think I wouldn't? (laughs) Come here. Get over there, big man. There. He gets scared flying around. Me too. You, mister? Yeah, real scared. Scared enough to want to marry up with that lady? The widow spoon? Is that the reason you run off? We didn't want you to marry up just because of Billy and me. Now, don't you think I got enough trouble with one woman around the house? Never knew it felt so good to be sick. You've been too busy being a mama. I don't want to be a mom anymore. Just your little girl. We want you to be our papa. keeping a family together. Uh-huh. 